When it comes to positions in Tower of God, SIU does a great job of slowly introducing us to these special positions, positions that normally you wouldn't acquire. So, for example, Defender, Aqua Williams, Hendo Lock, Blood Matter, you know the drill. And then for people like Huara Yoon and Evan, of course, they are guides, which is on a whole nother level of positions, right? And then, of course, aside from the five basic positions, you've also got some other sort of special positions, like Anima. Now, animas are interesting, because being an anima is one of the only skills where you can't really train to become an anima. You can get better at becoming one, but it requires a natural skill. There's a lot going on here. So today, we're going to break down what it means to be an anima, who we know in Tower of God who are anima and have that skill, and basically what it means going forward for Tower of God. This is the year of the bonehead, so if you want to hop on the subscriber train, then definitely hit that button. And and like this video for more Tower of God Explained content just like this. So overall, being an anima means essentially you're able to control and subjugate creatures. And for the most part, you know, we see a lot of Shinwei or divine sea fish that are controlled and subjugated in this way. They're sort of the most natural uh, found creature in the tower. You see them everywhere. There's all different kinds, like the white steel eel and etc. And these creatures can be subjugated and controlled. One of the first anima that we ever meet is Sunwoo Nare. She's a great example at what being an anima means, so I'm probably gonna use her for a lot of this video. But essentially, again, you have to have that innate skill. It's not like Bomb can just become, well, okay, maybe, hmm. Bomb's a little bit different, but <laughs> we'll use somebody else. It's not like Kuhn out of nowhere can be like, oh, I'm gonna read some books and train under Han Sung Yu, and then you can just start being an anima. Like, you have to have that innate talent. So people like Narei and Ren and Han Sung Yu, they had that talent and then they were able to train it and then master it. We don't know if Narei's mastered it, but you get the idea. What's interesting about this is the Lopobia family is famous for being able to use the anima skill very well. You know, like they, they are sort of the ones that pioneered this position. Now, it, apparently the position did exist and the skill did exist before the 10 warriors and V and Arlen entered the tower. But the Lopobia family is the family that's most famous for it. To use an anima, you have to have what's called a bowl or a fish bowl. And bowls can vary, you know, nor like let's use Nare for example. She carries around that little jar, right? And she keeps her little Shinwei, her little fishy. <laughs> a little fishy in the bowl and that is required you have to have some kind of a bowl to control your creatures right and it's sort of like their home base and if you don't have that then you're not able to keep the control over the creature it's filled with shinsu and you have to like even get new shinsu sometimes to like keep that control fresh and it's, it's kind of complicated, but essentially you gotta have a bowl. Now bowls can vary. Again, Nare uses that jar to control her creature, but Alphine, for example, with her shadow fox, which isn't even a divine sea fish, they don't have to be divine sea fish to control them, right? She uses the entire room as the bowl. Now that worked to her advantage, but that was also bad because typically you want a portable bowl. That's like, that's the way to go because otherwise you're kind of limited in what you can do with the animal skill. Now I did say you have to have a bowl, but there are actually some examples where some characters have broken that rule. One of them being Elaine with her wolf Fenrir. Now Fenrir is kind of different because Elaine is obviously from a branch of the Lopobia family, the, the wolf branch, right? The wolf Wolf clan, so it's kind of different. She got their special skill and she kind of breaks the boundary that way. But what's also interesting is that Angel, Raguel, is also able to use her metal fish without needing a bowl. I'm assuming it's because it's a different sort of special kind of anima skill. Maybe they're not real fish or there's something going on there. But it is interesting, some anima, because they are anima, can actually break that rule. Anima can use their skill to not just fight. So for example, Nare, once again, she used her fish to like use signals and find the underground tunnels, which proved essential to finishing that last test on the second floor. You know, most of the characters we've seen, they've used their creatures to fight, but you don't have to. You can use it to scout, you can use it to explore or distract people and whatever, which is really interesting. Now there is a weakness to using this skill. If you're using this and the animal's going out there, the creature and you're fighting, but you're taken down, 
the animal is taken down with you because the anima skill is a Shinsu skill, like anything else, right? You need the bull and you need to be like controlling them, you know? So if you're taken down, they're taken down as well. I'm gonna go through a list of anima that we know and talk about just very briefly the anima that they're able to control. Han Sung Yu, he used that giant fish thing to eat wrens in season one. Ren, he summoned many, many fish in season one. Obviously, Yuri took out all of them. He's also a very talented uh, anima. Dorian Frog is able to summon a massive frog from his weapon, and it's actually extremely powerful. The Lopopia family head, we haven't actually seen what he can do, but in the one picture that we have of him, he's surrounded by animals, so I can only assume that this guy is like a master at using the anima skill. Yes, Racha obviously has the giant cat, so... That's fun, I hate that thing. Dakoko has the giant wind bird, which not only is an extremely powerful anima, but he's also able to transfer his mind into it after Doom kills him. So that's kind of busted. Didiano has that giant monkey who's throwing those balls and they bounce around, extremely powerful. And then Lafav, Lopobia Lafav. She is a sniper, spear bear, right? And she's highly ranked because of her special bullets. However, she was also able to summon these like crab uh, Shinwei against Evankel. So again, being from the Lopo Bia family, you have that skill innately, or at least the potential to have that skill. As far as regulars go, we have Verdi, who is able to have the octopus, right? We have Elaine, who has Fenriel. Again, she's from the Wolf Clan. Alphine with the Shadow Fox and the giant room that she keeps as its bowl. Man, I want to see Alphine again. Alphine's kind of awesome. Noray with her little fish that's able to scout ahead and, and sort of use some kind of sonar to, to find things underground. And then Angel or Reguel with her metal fish. Those are all of the anima that we know. Some of them are more powerful than others. Some of them have developed their Shinwei and their skill better than others. But overall, you can see here, I named like... 12 different anima, and half of them were from the Lopobia family, like over half of them. So it's definitely a Lopobia thing, but you don't have to be. Han Sung Kyu, you know, he's a master anima and he's not from the Lopobia family. So overall, being an anima is sort of just like, you can main it, it's, I think of it like a video game. You can main it as your class or your skill, or it can be like a secondary thing where it's sort of like a backup. So Han Sung Yu, he's a master wave controller, but he's still a very skilled anima, you know? But then someone like Dakoko, or I'm assuming maybe the Lopopia family head, it's probably like their main thing, you know? So I find this really interesting. The position itself has a lot going on. And as far as the future goes, I wanna meet more anima, you know? I wanna meet more people from the Lopopia family. We've already met a ton of them. But I wanna see what other kinds of anima exist, maybe different kinds of creatures. I don't know, there's a lot of potential here. I wanna see what SIU can do with this. And I kind of want our squad to maybe learn it too. Maybe I wanna see Elaine start to use her anima skill more. Maybe um, someone else can return and we can see them fight. Han Sung Yu can start using his skill. I'd love to see that. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed and want to support the channel further, we do have a Patreon page. Thank you to all of my supporters here. You guys are incredible. I want to give a huge shout out, especially to the kings of the tower, the supporters of the channel, sponsors of the channel even. We got Big Juice, Snap the Slayer Anime, and Saeed Masood. You guys are awesome. These guys give me video suggestions all the time. They're always great. I still have to work on a couple of them. They're super awesome. If you want to become a king of the tower, high ranker, slayer candidate, whatever, definitely check out our Patreon page. It's linked down below. And with that, I'll see you guys in my next Tower of God Explained video. Take care.